Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest cut for time SNL sketches. For this list, we'll be looking at the greatest SNL skits that didn't make it to the live show. Did we forget a favorite sketch of yours? Let us know in the comments below. Presents the Allen Cube featuring Keith Allen Croft. Number 10, College Admissions. After the college admission scandal rocked the U.S. education system, SNL was more than ready to satirize the whole thing. We're looking to admit about five more students, and in lieu of some of the embarrassing news stories out there, let's be extra careful with our choices. They created this skit about administrators choosing college applications as a response to real-world events. When considering new admissions, the staff seems to skip over certain candidates and prioritize nepotism. Oh, let's do that. Ooh, I, I agree. He Hollywood. He fun. And I love the idea that Lou Ferrigno might just, like, show up on campus one day. So cool. They let their opinions be known in funny ways, such as revealing that they want to meet a student's famous relative. A and his last name is Jeffries. Any relation to the giraffe? The fictional giraffe from <laughs> Toys R Us. Ooh, that could be a big donation. Sandra Oh's dedicated performance brings an interesting angle to the sketch as one of the misguided board members. It's all played for laughs and feels even closer to the truth than expected. <laughs> Admissions police, you're all under arrest. Uh, damn it. Damn it, Carl. She was undercover. Number nine, coal miners. While the setup of this sketch makes it seem like a gruff journey to a coal mine, it's actually much more than that. The workers end up butting heads with Bill Hader's sassy co-worker, LeVar. Try 46. What? <laughs> what you saying, Teddy lies about his age? I'm not saying nothing. I'm just picking at my coal. He seems to know all of the hot gossip about the miners, which makes him a hilarious changeup from the other men. Hater's performance hinges on amazing line readings and props like baby carrots. What are you getting at, LeVar? I ain't getting at nothing except for my baby carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Through all of his revelations, LeVar stirs up trouble between him and the others in the funniest way possible. The character brings together this absurd skit with an unforgettable monologue. Well, that play Chris Krangle for the orf at the orphanage. Let the orphans sit on my lap and ask me for things they'll never get. Are those some of the bad things you say about me? Number eight, morning news. It goes without saying that certain subjects are difficult to tackle on comedy shows. After the protests in Ferguson, Missouri, SNL chose to confront the events from a different angle. Deep breath, Jenny. Just read the prompter. Thanks for making us part of your morning, St. Louis. It's time to rise and smile. But please don't play the jingle. Get up, start your day, hey. They use the perspective of television hosts to engage with darkly funny ideas. Keenan Thompson and Cecily Strong's presenters try to carry on with a happy-go-lucky morning program. Oh, I, I just thought of someone that's not us. Let's uh, go to Trisha Darby with a traffic report. Trisha, how's the traffic out there? Bad. <laughs> this ironic mix only gets worse as they unintentionally reference the unrest in the streets. Today, we're making a frittata. Now, to make it healthy, we're only going to use the whites of the egg. Use the whole damn egg. For anyone who loves it when the show takes a chance, this premise represents a tight wire act that feels dangerous and funny at the same time. Number seven, cool. Like a sitcom from another planet, this segment pokes fun at comedies with understated acting. Every actor brings out their most awkward performance, embodying crazed characters that you don't see on an average show. Can you please just leave, Dougie? Whoops, did I mess up again? <laughs> Kyle Mooney's nerd tries to become cool and impress his neighbors. More hilarious by the minute, this idea involves some leaps in logic and a gigantic machine straight out of a sci-fi movie. Mooney and Beck Bennett show that they're pros at turning any situation into a brilliantly weird premise. Sure, what's up? You're very cool now. Thank you. The talk is over.
With the inclusion of Ryan Gosling, the sketch really takes off with a dance party. It all comes together in a funny ending that raises more questions than answers. I just care about my clothes and what people think about me. Oh yeah, because you only care about being cool. I miss the old Dougie. Okay, I'll go back to being Dougie. Number six, Supermarket Spree. Melissa McCarthy shows off her gift for physical comedy once again in this game show parody. But choose wisely, because some items have more value than others. I know, I have a plan. Now get ready to shop in three, two, one, go! I have a plan! Set in a supermarket, she must fill her cart with items to rack up money. The contestant makes several unorthodox choices that include giant fish and even a deli slicer. Now what's Padgett got? Looks like an industrial deli slicer. Those things go for about $4,000. It's especially funny to see her attack her opponent, robbing her in the middle of the round. McCarthy's player doesn't stop there either, as she goes for the cameraman and the game clock. Making fun of shows like Supermarket Sweep, this bizarre adaptation brings thrills and laughs from start to finish. Time has almost expired. And oh no, what's this? Pageant has ripped the game clock off the wall. Who knows how long this is gonna take, folks? Number five, Christmas Romance. Do you love the movie Love Actually? If you answered yes to that question, then you'll definitely enjoy this homage to an iconic scene from the film. What are you doing here? My husband's right inside. Who is it? Um, it's carol singers. Pete Davidson's character shows up on a doorstep to woo a woman. He uses cue cards to perform a romantic gesture that quickly gets out of control. Davidson starts to reveal crazier messages, including funny non sequiturs involving skeletons. <laughs> At one point, Amy Adams breaks after having to read along with every hilarious line. The best part of this sketch is the fact that it becomes a real roller coaster of emotions. Look, you're sweet, but I'm married, and also you're not that sweet, so. Oh, sure, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Peace. Number four, children's show. Poking fun at television for kids, this colorful show begins innocently enough with Michael Keaton's host, Toby. Dance and sing with me, your new best friend, Toby. He and the talking furniture are supposed to be having a good time until the bank comes to repossess everything. They're taking the house. <laughs> huh? Uh, it's just... This is just a bunch of bank mumbo jumbo. It's, it's not important. It's a funny twist that becomes much darker with each new revelation, culminating with the furniture being taken away. Keaton gives the character layers that only make this funnier. How come we never see the cameras, Toby? <laughs> what do you mean? The television cameras. Where are they? Even as his character explains the real purpose of the furniture, the actor maintains his composure through the insane plot. His shocking exit gives the scene one last memorable surprise. Number three, Alan. For this sketch, a couple returns home to find a giant gift called Alan. The glass box features Bill Hader dancing inside and making faces. It says press the yellow button to begin enjoying your Alan. It's a mostly silent performance from the comedian that might be one of his most underrated. While Vanessa Bayer and Taryn Killam's characters consult the manual, they learn about all of the complicated lore behind their present. The whole unit is the Allen. The glass box is the Allen cube. The man inside is Keith Allen Croft. Wait, he has a real last name, so he, he's like a real man? Oh, uh, Hater keeps smiling and dancing through it all until the skit takes a darkly comedic turn. The ending features a surprise escape, making for a funny premise that breaks from tradition in a good way. Ah! He's out of the box! Thanks, Alan Core. Ah! Number two, cast list. If you were a performer in high school, you'll appreciate this glimpse into the world of theater kids. A group of excited students waits for their casting assignments from their villainous director, played by Will Ferrell. I see the sharks are circling the boat. <laughs> oh my god, so funny, Mr. Conan. <laughs> Shut up, Beth. Full of funny and cringeworthy moments, the ensemble captures the awkwardness of teenagers. 
Pharaoh's character makes his actors wait in a dramatic scene full of bait and switches. Conrad Birdie is an Elvis type. Sing something like you've bedded 1,000 women. Yes, there goes the baker with his tray like always. By the time the list finally makes it to the board, the performers try not to break as Pharaoh bumps into them. The outfits, attitudes, and jokes round out this amusing trip back to school. Oh my god, he double cast it? We each only get to do one night? No! no. Yes, gorgeous, sweet chaos. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. My Little Stepchildren. This sketch finally gives emo kids a creepy doll of their own. Some kids' gut instinct is to go dark. Why not embrace it? My Little Stepchildren are perfect for kids with a flair for the dramatic. Date in Mexico. Will Ferrell eats shellfish and freaks people out as a man waiting for his date. And I wash feet at a salon. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't even pay for this stupid lobster I'm eating. Goddesses of Creation. Kristen Wiig's celestial being helps to create the world and make her counterparts jealous. She's like, oh, this is so stupid. <laughs> um, but I thought of a clam. And uh, I would describe it as it's like a little nugget of slime that lives inside of like a hard coin purse. Approved. Next. What? A friendship song. Female friends have a funny way of trying to help each other out. I'm gonna lift you up by tearing them down. I'm gonna hit on all, all the flaws we found. Love is blind. The reality show gets a remix, courtesy of some timely COVID-19 jokes. I wish I could be there to hug you, cause I'm a hugger. And also I don't wash my hands, and I put my fingers in my mouth. Okay, you're my husband. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Gus Chicken's Old Prospector We've got to give Will Ferrell credit for making this absurd skit especially memorable. His character is part of a military team that's preparing for an operation, but he's not an average soldier. Top of old Boot Hill, just follow the dry creek bed, <clears throat> but be careful, there's quicksand. Gus, please. No, peaches. The prospector comes straight out of an old western film with his accent and delivery. Farrell's performance alone makes this a winner, but things get even funnier because of everyone else. Hey Gus, do you even know where we're going? Oh, pickle shoes, sure I do! His co-stars like Jimmy Fallon and Tracy Morgan can't help but laugh. Turning this sketch into a laugh riot, the cast steers this beautiful disaster home alongside the hilarious lead performer. Oh, sweet Jezebel, why are you so sweet? I think you down to market. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.